Okay, so welcome to Let's Play Escape from Castle Nunway. Nunway, sorry. Otherwise known as Project P. The P, of course, is for philosophy. This is a Let's Play of an RPG Maker 2000, yes, 2000, 19 years ago, game that I, the mysterious Let's Player, once made for a high school philosophy class, of which I was part, not teaching as it happened, back in 2006. Yada yada yada. So basically it's a game about philosophy in 2D. Um, well you'll see, you'll see. So who is this video for? Well this video is for people who are floating around on the internet and have stumbled upon it and would like to watch a let's play of a old amateur RPG about philosophy, 2D. It's also for those studying philosophy or those interested in philosophy who want to learn a little bit more about it. I am, at the, this current moment in time, a high school philosophy teacher myself. The pupil has become the master, you might say. And I am going to be talking various nonsense and hopefully some sense about philosophy as we go through. There's a small chance it could also be useful for anyone sitting the UK AQA Philosophy A-Level exam, uh, which I was doing when I made this once upon a time. So I might say some things which are relevant for that, so hey, that could be an excuse to watch YouTube instead of doing your homework. No, pretend, pretend I didn't say that. Pretend I didn't say that. Right, let's, let's just get on with this, okay. Oh, by the way, one more thing, sorry, before I jump on. So, um... This game features lots of my favourite songs, or at least my favourite songs when I when I made it at the age of 17, 18. Um, however, for the internet version which I'm playing, which is also the safe version with swear words edited out, um, to get it online, I had to I had to cut out all the original MP3 music and find MIDI's, so downgraded musical versions of all of the songs. So in most of them are, are the songs but in MIDI form where I could find them and otherwise they're MIDI replacements. So this actually is uh, Dead Souls by Joy Division, my favourite band of all time. Bonus points if you knew that, but in MIDI form of course. Okay, that was a way too long introduction as is typical of me. Let's jump in. There are options are go, that would say low if there are any save files and no. So I'm going to go with go, here we go. So attention, all characters in this game are the original creation of the author. Any resemblance may, they may bear to real life people is completely coincidental, something like that. I stole that from South Park, obviously, you know. And this song, bonus points if you recognise, it's Optical One by Interpol. Welcome to Escape from Castle Mundi, a cool game where you walk around and fight and other stuff like that. It is essential that you play this game with sound. Oh yeah, I've already told you this, sorry. And uh, incorporate some of the maker's favourite songs in MIDI form. Before you start, you must answer some preliminary questions, I assume, yeah, which will determine how you play. Just answer truthfully, as it will make the game more fun for you to play. Playing as Desmond, which for some reason was my main for day part, will give you a slightly easier ride, so if you want the game to be slightly easier, first of all, make sure that you choose a priori, which means from before, as your preferred type of knowledge. Controls are the arrow keys, movement and navigating menu, Z for confirm slash action, and X for capital for menu. You don't need to do that, you're not playing it, I'm playing it. If you have any problems, please refer in the read to the readme part of the main folder. You can save at any time outside of Battle Barrack, which is the main menu, and you will say, well, duh, it is, e it is wise to do so regularly. Please note that due to time constraints, only a very select group of characters feature in this game, and that these characters are only characters based on very shallow and cursory knowledge. That's how my philosophy teacher used to refer to us in our knowledge. And in one case, a bizarre random fact from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yes. Which is that Descartes had a fetish for cross-eyed women. Might as well give it away now. Sorry, spoiler. Right, which do you prefer? A posteriori or a posteriori or knowledge? As you know, philosophers, a posteriori is knowledge from experience, a posteriori is knowledge from before experience. So, yeah, after experience, before experience, this is the um, 
epistolarize the knowledge that comes from the senses, the experiential world, from having sense experiences. A priori, for those who, who believe in it, which actually most philosophers in the most in the survey, uh, knowledge such as knowledge of math, knowledge of what is true by definition, knowledge of log not logic, you don't need to experience the things in the world to know that they are true. That's your first bit of the Let's go everywhere and see the event that this day part, actually renovate it, you know, to the humor of the seven human Do you believe in God? I'm going to go with yes, because as it happens, I do. I'm a Christian, as I like to tell my students. Was well, Achilles truly the greatest Greek hero in existence? Well, this is our first in-joke, unfortunately. Oh no, my daughter's waking up, which might interrupt this lesson. No, she's gone back to you, okay. I'm um, doing this uh, while I'm on duty with my daughter. May interrupt at some point. Um, let's say, let's say no. So that would just irritate my friend Julian, who I made this uh, with once upon a time. Was Wagner a genius? The famous German composer. Well, he's definitely a genius. Language is the key. Not to everything. Do you like Nirvana? This is Unwin. Yeah, so Nunwi is a bad anagram for Unwin. This was originally made for my philosophy teacher. The great Mr. Unwin. Uh, he wants option two for more dial, interesting dial, let's do that. Is Colin Shields cool? Another in joke. Son of Professor uh, Christopher Shields. One, at one time at Oxford University, he might still be there, uh, one of my friends from school days. So it's kind of mean to say anything, but it's do good to be a lovely word. Infinity would be a fine act, but that's a stupid thing to say. Uh, this music is good, yes. At last! Fade to black, say the stage directions. Once upon a time, there was a very clever fellow with an inconsequential name. He was quite interested in doing philosophy at university, so that is exactly what he did. After that, he moved somewhere else and took up teaching in his beloved subject. One day, his girlfriend dumped him. In his depression, he turned to the occult and became a masterful conjurer. <laughs> his evil powers grew so great that he was unsurpassed in this field. Remembering his first love, though, he created himself a castle in another dimension and magically summoned the most influential philosophers of all time to it in order to carry out his sick experiment. Now that's not talking about me, because I was a student when I made this. That was talking about my philosophy teacher having a dig at him. None of it happened there. So, welcome to Escape from Castle Nunby. Once again, this is like the longest introduction ever. Uh, bonus points if you recognise this is Orinoco Flow by Enya. Why not? Why not? Just adjust the mic again, sorry about that. One more time. Whoa, beaming in. Okay, here we are. Desmond Descartes. Where am I? I'm not even going to try and attempt a French accent. Where am I? I, I did it. I, I attempted it once. How did I get here? No, fool! That's the wrong way! What? what? Where did that voice come from? You gained control of Desmond. Good, I haven't bugged. It's so embarrassing when I do this with students and it bugs at the first point of movement and then you have to redo the whole thing. Okay, so I'm walking around in this place. Uh, not a whole lot happening. Each tree is exactly the same. Can't go up here. That's great game design, isn't it? Uh, what does this say? Castle Nunwi. One philosophy road, another dimension. AD1, 4YT. Why that postcode? Nobody knows. Uh, does the chest statue do anything? Oh, this one's called Truth. That's pretentious. Secret code? What? Okay. I actually do know the secret code, but if you want to do this cheat code, then you need to play the game for yourself. Or watch the LP to the end, I guess, and find the cheat code out for yourself. So you can do that. Whoops, you can do that. So do that. And do it. Incorrect. The skeleton. How creepy I found this. You found the contradiction fallacy. Effective versus extreme skepticism. Nice. That was really useful. Let me go up here and get to the other screen. Also, great game design. Okay, that's 
let's go up here. Ooh, ugly old man said, Hey you! Who are you? Who am I? Why, I am the great Socrates! Hmm, Socrates, hey? Wait a minute, I know you. Well, that's a very Greek guy who flew around asking stupid questions. I'm going to kill that playwright, says Socrates. That's a classic in joke. What's the name of the playwright? Aristophanes. Famous in parody, Socrates. Hold on, aren't you supposed to be, well, uh, dead? How would you define dead? Well, I. No, wait, I see what you're trying to do here. I'm not getting into one of those discussions. Your mate Plato will write a book that make you look like an utter moron. Okay, let's do a bit of philosophical uh, explanation now. So, we're starting as Descartes, playing as Descartes, who's the father of modern philosophy, kicking it off in about the 16th century. But really, philosophy has its roots in Greece, uh, with the Greeks. You can tell that because it's a Greek word, philo, sophia, philosophy, love and wisdom. Originally came from Greek learning, Greek discussion about the deep questions of life and the finer things, although it encompasses all sorts of disciplines. And there were philosophers before Socrates, for sure, like the Sophists, Thales, and the like, various other people. But, but they're called the pre Socratics because Socrates is the most important early ancient philosopher. Uh, and just as Descartes is from modern philosophy, uh, Socrates can be said to, to really um, epitomise and uh, um, kickstart the ancient Greek philosophy. He's the most important figure, easily. Except that, that is to say, along with Plato, because actually Socrates didn't write anything, he just talked to people. Uh, so we don't know as much as we could about the historical Socrates. We know what Plato gave us of him and Plato wrote up some of Socrates his teachers discussions um, in in philosophical dialogues which are the kind of starting foundational point in in, philosoph in serious philosophical study such as you know Euthyphro, um, Mino, uh, Vitetus, others there are others so what you have here in 2D form is two of the utter giants of the history of philosophy facing off against one another actually they're not going to battle and I know their uh, conversation is a bit trite, but hey, I was 17. I'll, I'll probably say that a lot during this Let's Play. Let's carry on. Very well, says Socrates. Do you really want me to tell you why I, why we are here? Sock it to me. <coughs> don't you ever, ever make that joke again. Sorry, don't worry. Don't worry, nobody does wrong on purpose. You're just ignorant. Now, Oh, that, that's something Socrates taught you. Never do wrong. Because if you knew it was wrong, you wouldn't do it. So, everyone does wrong by accident. Not actually possible to do wrong. Um, in a way where you're truly moral, morally responsible. That's the kind of weird, irritating thing he said. Now, says Socrates, if you want to know why you're here, you must first know where here is. You are, in fact, dear Desmond, in another dimension that exists outside of conventional time and space. How is that possible? How did I get here? You're asking a lot of questions. I like that. Would you care to answer them? Well, if you must know, an evil conjurer has summoned your consciousness in the form of a self-projected psychic metaphor in his evil lair in another dimension, where he will battle you against other philosophers in order to see who is the greatest among you. Dramatic pause. I know you're a great philosopher, everything is rocky, but you're taking the myth. I assure you, no Michael is being extracted from anywhere. What proof? Yes, maybe. Well, first of all, look around you. Look around you. Just look around you. That's a in joke and reference to a an old BBC comedy series called Look Around You, which was a parody science documentary that our chemistry, my A-level chemistry teacher used to let us watch at the end of term. Very niche, very niche. Well, what do you see having looked around you? I see... Je regarde substances extended in space. Yes, yes, but look a little more closely, Descartes. Do you notice something strange? Not really. Well, firstly, all the trees are exactly the same, as are the little groups of flowers. Then there's the water. What's about it? It's perfectly uniform! It's pixelated, for goodness sake, retard. So what? What do you mean, so what? 
first off, it proves that this place is a strongly built and kind of direction, quickly constructed by an evil conjurer who couldn't be bothered to make the trees look different. This is a great dialogue. You should be carried from this beginning to be I'm getting a clear and distinct idea. Ooh, Descartes reference. Yes, you should be clear and distinct idea. That you are a bit loopy, Toppy. Now, I made you say Toppy earlier, but actually, that's the first time you said it. You want more proof? Well, if you think about this, you can't be anything other than psychic projections as we're managing to talk to each other. Well, I don't know about you, Socky, but I don't usually have difficulty talking to people. Oh, I thought he was getting irritated that he was being called Socky. Never mind. Even when you're talking in English to an ancient Greek? Pantaloons, says Descartes. You're right, I've been talking in English all this time. Mad! I must be in another dimension. There you go. How do I get out of here? Descartes wants to know. Unfortunately for you, the only way to get out of here is to go into that castle behind me. If you beat all the other philosophers in there, only then will the evil conjurer grant you passage out of here. How terribly cliché, says the French word. Hey, the game designer, I mean evil sorcerer, needs some reason to make you take on everyone in the castle. What about you, Socky? What are you going to do? Uh, I have to go somewhere else. Ha ha ha! Hey, you didn't disappear, you're just hiding behind this tree. Go away! Well, I guess after exploring the main menu for a bit, what do you want for that part of the game? What was that to use for the, the very long two-year battles? Uh, weapon, foil, full sword, ah yeah, defense, chainmail, country, France, nice, that's a lot I did it. Speciality, carving a sword, original, and it doesn't have any stuff, good, that's pretty safe. Um, let's get back in. Yeah. Yeah, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. It's possible. It's a single corridor so far. Ah, uh, he's this. Oh, yes, I remember who this is. We'll see. Which philosopher are you then? I am no philosopher. I am the evil demon of hyperbolic doubt, which is why my voice is shifting to become demonic. <laughs> You mustn't go. You must got. You must go through me to get into the castle. Ah, my arch nemesis! I have defeated you before and can do so again. Eat Pongato, malicious beast! Evil demon told his idea. Okay, so more teaching. Descartes, when he embarks on his philosophical project, he gets the most famous in the book, The Meditation. What he tries to do is to doubt. Oh, shouldn't have had all that uh, guacamolean tortilla chip. He tries to doubt everything he could possibly doubt in order to work out what is certain. And um, what's, the, what's the point? Well, he's just trying to investigate the contents of his, of his mind, of his psyche, with serious philosophical scrutiny. This is the philosophical method. Well, one way of looking at it is trying it. And, He's trying to work out what can he actually know for sure and things that he thinks he knows. He systematically goes about doubting everything that he can. There are three ways of doubt. He's starting off with um, doubting his senses, what kind they deceive him. Then moving on to doubting um, whether he's actually awake or not. He's suddenly dreaming and it seems like he's awake, but he's not. So maybe the external world is there. And then doubting even beyond that, the truth of mathematics, which seems to be the same in dreams. And um, other truths like all time is going to be set and so popular. And they just read the. La 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 la. Okay, I'll cut that a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, where were they? Where's the doubt two? Where's the doubt three? That's right. Even if there are other truths, like the truth of that, he gets all the way down and discovers in the face of. Well, he discovers he could be being deceived by an evil demon, that's actually still wave 3, who is here, the, the demon of, of hyperbolic doubt. And he, uh, well, he's not that's not a good one. He, um, he hypothesizes that he could be being deceived by actually everything in his mind by this evil genius or this evil demon in some translation, which leaves him with nothing, or does it, except he 
Descartes physically decides that the one thing that he could not doubt, that he cannot doubt, even as an evil genius, he is controlling his mind and feeding him with information. A bit like being in the Matrix, or a bit like being a brain in a vat, um, having an electrode plugged into your brain, so that you're being fed with information. Mixed, um, in incorrect sense of or uh, experiences that don't relate to, to an external world. Even if that's happening, what can he not doubt? One thing, that he is, he exists. I am I existence. And the discourse of the method is another way famously in that he's I think therefore I am a cogito ergo sum. And that is his foundational starting point for philosophy that he cannot doubt. Unfortunately it's already been used up by the autopilot, but you hopefully saw earlier that the cogito, the special move they cast with powerful weapon, does huge damage. That's the foundation from which he then tries to build up his philosophical project and tries to uh, work out other things he can know based on that initial sure starting point. Okay, that's, that's, that's Cartesian skepticism and uh, how he starts to discipline. I'm trying to destroy this thing. It's a little while. He's back in there. Unfortunately, way too long. doing modern philosophy at least. You're going to start with Descartes, you're going to start with hyperbolic jabs. And if you're trying to construct a philosophical system, since Descartes, many people would say you're going to need to deal with the problem about skepticism about the external world. Is there really an external world? But there is, because we've defeated our opponent's arguments. we found 10 quid and a caffeine pill because demons need caffeine. Ah, you have defeated hyperbolic jabs somehow. You may now enter the castle proper. I could have just walked around you, but hey, whatever's good. So, if you can establish that there is actually an external world, then you will be allowed into the castle of philosophy. That's the metaphor that's going on here. Wow, I'm so confirmed. Uh, who's this? Hello there, do I have to defeat you too? No. Do I look like a philosopher to you? Well, you kind of do, you're in a suit and tie. Uh, yes. No, you be foolish. I'm a chicken. What? Uh, no, I think you're a person. A very tall, very strange, and very stupid person, but I think you're still a person. Nonsense, what makes you think I'm not a chicken? Sorry, not all of these people should have posh British accents. That's just because it's my accent and the one I revert to most naturally. And I've got a cold, so I'll do my best. Nonsense, what makes you think I'm not a chicken? Well, first of all, chickens go cluck or papa, not squawk or quack. Then there's the whole uh, suit and tie thing. Finally, you're talking to me. That's all very well, but it doesn't use the fact that I'm a chicken. Why not? Because I have a clear and distinct perception that I'm a chicken. Okay, teaching point. This is uh, taking a dig at Descartes' clear and distinct ideas, which you've already seen earlier in the battle. Taking Descartes, trying to build up from his foundational starting point of being unable to doubt that he is and he exists, even if there's an evil demon feeding him lies by resorting to what he calls clear and distinct ideas. Famously, the clear and distinct idea in his head, other than that he exists, that clear and distinct for sure, is that he has an idea of God in his mind. And Descartes thinks that he can use this idea as sort of his second step to then go on to prove the other a priori things that he thought he knew before, their validity, and all their sound, I suppose, and also to re-establish his belief in the, the reality of the external world. And this is known as a Cartesian circle. He's been criticised famously in philosophy for this um, by, well, people say that he, effectively, that he uses his idea of God in his mind to validate his belief in the external world. However, very embarrassing moment, but it is, it is quite late in the evening. Um, I'm sorry, what it is is that he uses his idea of God to validate his, the legitimacy of his clear and distinct idea, that's it. But his idea of God is itself a clear and distinct idea, so there's a certain 
the tendency there. It's a question begging. He's using God to validate clear and distinct ideas, but clear and distinct ideas to validate God. That's the one, that's the monkey. Gosh, it's been a long day of teaching. And so I had a temporary brain fart on that. I apologise. If you watch this part, you really don't care too much about that. Because you're kind of a aren't you? So you've been having money back for that one. But actually, you're not paying me. So let's carry on. How dare you blaspheme against my clear and distinct ideas? You are clearly mistaken, sir. Not a sir, I'm a chicken. And my name is Bob. Well, Bob, I challenge you to single combat. Nothing doing. I'm only a chicken. Why don't we team up instead? I suppose it could have hurt. Brilliant. Bring me some chicken feed and I'll join you. I know there's some hidden in this room somewhere. What? Why would there be? Hey, the orphan needed something to make this game last longer than 15 minutes. Pardon me? Did you just violate the suspension of disbelief? But should disbelief. Come on! My name's Bob the Chicken, for goodness sake. There's no disbelief here. You know that this is a all of deceit. I've broken the portal so many times better. Come back when you found my feet. Oh, and don't leave this part of the castle. I have a feeling it's lost us on the floor. That'd be quite difficult to tackle alone. Okay. That's a question. That's a little bit of chicken feet. Oh, that's a blue armor. Find all sorts of things. Oh, you found a blue sword. That's what these books say. out for that in version 2, which will probably never appear. They would have had cool titles like Beyond Good and Evil and that's supposed to have a This unfortunately was just an in-joke. There was a kid in my class who said if Descartes had a clear and distinct idea that you were the chicken, or someone called Bob had that as a full experiment, would that make them a chicken? That's kind of based on a fundamental misunderstanding of what Descartes is saying, even if you do accept the Cartesian circle style criticism. However, I threw him in anyway, so here's Bob the chicken. Wow, I've got my feet. Congratulations. Something. Right to the left or right? I think it makes sense to the left. Uh, my voice is getting out, so I'm going to take a break. Oh, let's just read this first. Okay, so listen up. My name is Captain Kirk, but you can call me Johannes de Silentio, or Judge Wilhelm, or A, or whatever crazy pretentious pseudonym I feel like using today. This is Kate Guard. This room, like all good things, is a bit of a paradox. Basically, if you want to argue with me, then you have to pass a test first. It will assess both your memory and your understanding of God, and of me. Seeing as I'm told, whether rightly or wrongly, that you believe in God, ah yes, we said yes, didn't we? You're going to have to do pretty well if you want to take me on. Right, now do you see those five people over there? Uh, yes. Go and talk to them. Get to know them. Then come and talk to me. I will ask you some questions about them. If you get them right, and then get my questions about God right, then you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. Alright? Alright. Okay, I think I'm going to save right now, because I need to take a break. Might be five minutes, might be a few weeks, and come back to record with this later, because my voice is getting up. But I hope you enjoyed part one, Escape from Castle Then We, Let's Play Escape from Castle Then We, episode one. Like and subscribe, or whatever you said to say. Uh, comment. Sick. Drop me some comments if you'd like. Correct me about Cartes Cartesian circles, because it really is very late. And, um, yeah, ciao for now.